So another new rule this year, and this one has actually become a lot more problematic than the blindside block, and that's the pop-up kick. The problem with this rule is, unlike the blindside block, where we're given clear guidance on what is and is not a blindside block, we're not given a whole lot of guidance here. What you see right there before you is the definition of the rule book. Free kick, which kicker drives the ball immediately into the ground. Ball strikes the ground once and goes into the air as if it were kicked directly off the tee. That's all we have. Some states and the federation, they want us to use the criteria of too high is the kicker's head, about the kicker's head, so six to six and a half feet. That's what they're deeming too high. So that's probably the easiest way to do it. If a lot of you guys are familiar with pop-up kicks, you know that pop-up kicks generally go really high and they go right at 10 and a half yard. A perfectly executed pop-up kick. Pop-up kicks are very hard to execute perfectly though. So after they, went, after they made this rule and they came out with it, the interpreters committee, whoever it is, they kind of came out later and said too high should be head high of the kicker. So that's kind of the parameter we're going with. So we have two that we want to look at. This is the first one. And you really see from that view, remember we got the three criteria. Check the blind side block, we have three criteria. One is it got to be driven immediately into the ground. From this view, you can see it popping up out of the ground right there. So there's your first criteria. Second criteria is first bounce. And this is all in the one bounce. You can see it's right there at about 10 yards, maybe 10 and a half yards. And this, this should have been an illegal pop up kick. This was missed. And you see from this angle again, there it goes going to the ground. It is over the, it is over the head height of the kicker. Now he's a pretty tall kicker, at least over six feet probably. There you see is over his height, over his head, and then there's that the first bounce was. And it puts the that one put the returner in danger. Here we have the team's film of it. As you can see, there's the apex of the kick. It is higher than the kicker's head. And there you have the the returner going up for it. This one, I think th this should have been killed as a pop-up kick because of that. Also, one thing you want to look up for a pop-up kick, does the kicking team have a reasonable time to get there before R can feel the, feel the kick? And here they do. As you can see, he's feeling the kick and R is already there. And that's the safety issue that this foul, was, that the rule is trying to eliminate. Because the R is going up for the ball, player's in a precarious position, he's already getting hit. So this should have been killed immediately, and it should have been ruled an illegal pop up kick. We have another one. This one's a little different in that it goes deeper than the first one. See, this one's going to go about 16 yards deep, but it still meets all the criteria we talked about. It was kicked immediately into the ground. And all of this is on the first bounce. There it is. There's the apex of the kick over the kicker's head. Official should have killed it right there, regardless of. Now, I, I don't think this kick is the intent of the rule because I don't think K has a chance to get there before R can recover it. But judging by what we have been given this year, we should have killed it. It's a tough rule. Like I said, we're not given a whole lot of guidance. Um, I I do ex suspect that next year that will change, but for this year, if you're going to try it, either do the dribble kick, or if you're going to try the one bounce, keep it below your kicker's head.